Hi, my name is Ethan Smith. I'm a member of the Mount Leo congregation, and I'm a senior at Warren County High School. Hi, <laughs> my name is Ethan Smith. I'm a member of Mount Leo congregation, and I'm a senior at Warren County High School. Hi, <laughs> my name is Ethan Smith. I'm a member of Mount Leo congregation, and I'm a senior at Warren County High School. By now you should know my name, where I go to church, and where I go to school. And I have made sure that you know all three of these things. But how? How have I made you sure? You're right. I've repeated myself three times. Hopefully you'll soon see that I have purpose in doing these things, and I'm not just simply insane. I promise. So one time, all of you know my grandfather lives on Harrison Ferry Mountain. Harrison Ferry Mountain, and at the bottom, they just put up a red light. So I was at his house late one night, and he told me, he said, stop at the red light. I said, I will. He told me again, he said, Ethan, bottom of the hill, stop at the red light. So once again, before I left, he looked at me, he said, Ethan, stop at the red light. I said, Papa, I don't know why you're worrying so much, like all you grandparents and parents do. I'll stop at the red light. So I came to the mountain, and... I stopped at the red light. So he told me this and repeated himself several times so I would get the message that it was important that I stopped. In English class, we are taught that repetition is a way to show that something is either important or something we need to remember. This is no different in the Bible. God has many commands that are very important that he repeats over and over again in the Bible. And this is what my topic is tonight. The three commands that I want to focus on are all mentioned over 50 times in some form or fashion in the Bible. And that is love God, praise God, and obey all of His commandments. So let's take the first commandment I mentioned. Love God. Obviously, if we are Christians, or desire to be Christians, then we will love God. And if we love God, we will do all that He asks of us. Because He's not only given us life, but He's given us opportunity to have a home in heaven. Please read and turn with me to Mark, chapter 12, verse 30. Here we read the words of Jesus Christ. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Preceding Jesus saying this, the scribes had asked him, What is the first commandment of all? Now this was Jesus' response. He responded with this because he said, if we love God, then we will do all that God has asked of us. Now Paul said in 1 Corinthians 8, verse 3, if you would like to turn, but if anyone loves God, this is known by him. Now why would Paul say this? He says this when he is writing to the church in Corinth. He's lashing out at them because some are worshiping false idols and false gods. So God wants them to know, or Paul wants them to know, that God knows their hearts. So God knows who loves God, who loves Him, and who doesn't, and who's worshiping a false god. So again, Paul writes in Romans chapter 8 and verse 39. Nor height nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Again, Paul mentions our love for God. And he says that no matter the struggles or the hardships that we go through, our love for God should never change. Because God has given us everything in this life, including His Son dying on the cross of Calvary, so that we can one day have that home in heaven. A few more examples of scriptures that show this love for God that we should have. I would refer you to 1 John 5, 2, 1 John 4, 21, or Deuteronomy 6, 5. Now secondly, the Bible instructs us to praise God. This is very important, because if we praise God, then he would, we would do everything that He asked of us. Praising God is not something you would only do 
in a church building, sitting in a pew. Although this is a designated time and place for us to do so. Praising God is something we should do every day and every single moment of our life. This shows in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. Therefore, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. Now let us look at this again. Let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Continually. Non-stop or without end. <laughs> The Hebrews writer specifically says that our praise to God should never end. We should always praise God in everything that we do. Now turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 50. Here it gives us, gives us an example of praising God. Therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the Gentiles, and sing praises to your name. Samuel here displays a way and a prime time for us to praise God. And this is singing hymns. We should use this time during service to pay attention to the words that we are singing, for us to be closer to God, and so that God can hear our sweet voices singing to Him. Now, if you turn with me again to Psalms, 150 verses 1 through 2. Here in Psalms, it gives us a number of reasons of why we should praise God. Let us read. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. We need to praise God. Because God is great and He does great things. Before I leave this point, I want to give you other verses for reference. <clears throat> Such as Judges 5.3, Psalms 7.17, Ephesians 1.6, and Psalms 145 verse 3. Now finally, turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. The instruction to obey, obey God's commandments, all of them, is my final example tonight. Turn with me also to John fourteen fifteen. If ye love me, you will keep my commandments. This is something we may never lose sight of. Although we may look at ourselves and say, well, I have sinned, but at least I don't have these sins. I don't, I don't sin like these other people. Or, I'm a Christian, but I don't sin as bad as those people over there. No, God says that we should not compare our works to the works of other people. God says that we need to look at ourselves and keep all of His commandments as He has said in the Bible. <coughs> Now, we don't need to just keep the commandments, one or two of them, or just the ones we like, but rather all of them. As we see in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 8. And you will again obey the voice of the Lord, and do all His commandments which I command you today. Now Moses said this. Moses said this in order to show all of his followers and the followers of God that we must do all that is asked of us, all that is commanded of us by God. Today in the New Testament church, we as Christians must not just say we are Christians. We must do all that is asked of us to do. Now even though Moses is speaking in the Old Testament under the Old Law, it still applies to us today, because we are still children of God, and it's still a requirement that we do all that is asked of us. Mark chapter 1 and verse 27. Then they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. Mark is writing here about Jesus casting out demons, and the people marveling about it. 
we read that the demons obey Jesus when he asked to cast them out. Now, in case you're wondering why I added this scripture, Jesus commanded the demons to leave. So if the demons and the devil's angels listen to the commandments of Jesus, then how much more should we as Christians obey and do what we are asked? Now, in conclusion, many times in the Bible, commands are repeated to show that they are important and so that we have examples and scriptures when we're struggling in life. Just as my Papa Lee wanted me to know to stop at the red light at the bottom of the mountain, God wants us to know how to be a good Christian and what we need to do. Now the three commands that I mentioned here tonight, loving God, praising God, and obeying all of His commandments, summarize a Christian's work and our commitment to God. Love, praise, and obey. I hope this has directed your mind as a Christian tonight and will strengthen you in your walk. If you have put on Christ in baptism and need the prayers of the church tonight, then come for it. But if you have not, then your sins are not paid for by the blood of Christ. And you have not taken the first and most important step to accepting God's grace and His Son's sacrifice on the cross. If you believe that and want a home in heaven, then what you need to do tonight is express your belief, repent of your sins, and be baptized for the remission of your sins. This is obedience to the gospel of Christ. That is clearly found throughout His Word. And for those of you who have had your sins forgiven through baptism, but have fallen back into the ways of the world, please come as we stand and sing.